me now is someone embrace of Trump. It's former South Carolina Republican Congressman Mark Sanford, who was often critical of the president. It cost him his seat in Congress, and he's now considering challenging President Trump for the GOP nomination in 2020, largely on the issue of basically trying to create a debate inside the Republican Party of what the heck does conservative mean. Um, and we could, we could delve into that. But, but Congressman Sanford, I want to start with this issue of how did we go Why from two? We? I'd love to. I'd love. I to know you would. That, but boy. I know. I know. And I hope yeah. we get to see a debate yeah. between you and the president on this issue. I really do. I think it's important for the Republican Party to see that debate. But explain to me why we went from a Republican Party in Congress that in 2017 rhetorically seemed concerned about Russian interference to the Republican Party of 2019 that says, you know what? And I'm doing washing my hands here, Congressman Sanford. We're out. Whatever Trump says goes. Uh, the short answer is one of, of baseline politics, which is that, you know, parties circle the wagons. And the, the party, in a, a, a rather unusual way, has circled the wagon around President Trump uh, since he's been in office over these last two years. He has a, a forceful personality, and the sun, moon, and stars seem to orbit around him, at least within Republican office holder level politics. Um, and so you, you, we are where we are based on politics. That's a simple answer. You know, it, it, it does seem to be alarming that, you know, this week we had the Mueller testimony, we had this Senate intelligence report, but we had another incident this week that to me should actually raise more alarm bells, and that is the president seems to be standing alone in the Republican Party, even today, on wanting to punish Turkey, a NATO member, for essentially going to Russia for military help. Uh, and here the United States would like to sanction Turkey. And President Trump is begging them not to. I, look, I'm not saying there's a direct line here, but how does these dots not get put together and at least raise an alarm bell or two? Well, I don't know that, that they don't. I, I, there are a lot of conversations out there. But I, I think that right now you have disequilibrium, let me say that in English, disequilibrium in terms of the, the debate format. And so if you take, for instance, the Mueller you know, testimony of, of the other day, uh, Democrats had, in essence, to charge the Hill. They had to try and prove obstruction or a conspiracy of some sort, which is a tougher a rhetorical debate mm -hmm. uh, to get your arms around, particularly if you have a witness that's not going to lead you in that direction. Republicans had the high part of the hill, which is they just wanted to question process. So I called a friend on the way over here. I said, give me your take of the Mueller, uh, you know, uh, re report and, and, you know, hearing the other, the other day. His point was what it told me was that Mueller was not really in charge. And it raised for me a whole list of different conspiracy mm -hmm. questions as to who's really in charge. So I, I think it's just a disequilibrium in terms of debate and yeah. Republicans in some ways have the high ground in being able to, in essence, hold off the impeachment charge or the bigger question of collusion and obstruction. I guess, though, it, it seems to me that it, I don't it's more of the actions. I, I just I go back to you you're sitting there. OK, maybe we don't know if it was conspiracy here, or conspiracy there, but there are sure. things that are facts. The Russian government broke into the DNC. Those emails got leaked out to do, you know, I don't get why there I'm, isn't I'm not, I'm not more questioning outrage that. I'm just that. giving yeah. you the response no, of I understand that. a Republican stalwart who I called just to get a sort of a temperature reading on the way over here. Well, I guess the other, I guess the other way that sort of, to me, is, is an odd, you and I both know how this town works sometimes. President sure. Trump, imagine if he just said, you know what, boy, I'm Mitch McConnell, whatever election interference, send me those bills, I'll sign them. He'd get bipartisan praise and all this. This would be an easy layup for him. But he doesn't want to do it. And so you can't help but well, ask yourself, why doesn't he want to sign these bipartisan supported bills that would actually put in new safeguards to prevent cyber intrusions? Well, I, there may be more policy legitimacy on that one, I, in, in that if you look at, you know, the 2018 bill that I think had another tranche of about $300 million or so that hasn't been spent, there's money in existing state accounts that hasn't been spent. In some states, to your point, they're, they're, they're real shortfalls and they need extra cash. But, I mean, this is another example of the left arm not knowing what the right arm's doing in government, because in the mm -hmm. wake of the 2000 election cycle, what we saw was a $3 billion bill right. that moved us from paper ballot to electronic ballot, 
Now folks are saying we need to move back toward paper. You are right. And I think there is some warranted concern on the Republican side saying, well, what are we doing here? Well, all right. And that transitions me to another part of your candidacy, of, of what could be your candidacy. I know you sure. haven't made a decision. Yeah. Why, should, why should any viewer right now believe any Republican that ever tells them they care about the debt and deficit? Uh, they got a good point. Got me on that one, uh, because I think Republicans have lost unbelievable, if not all, credibility on the debt deficit and spending issue, which is to say we need to have a conversation within the Republican Party about what we believe on that front, because there's been incredible erosion as to people's belief in the Republican Party in being a financial stalwart. Do you worry that there is no Republican Party ideologic room for an ideological debate because it's not the Republican Party anymore. It's Trump's party. I think that's a legitimate question. But here's what I know. I mean, I've literally over the time of my time in office, whether in the governorship or in Congress on two different stints, I've had thousands upon thousands of different conversations with people at the grassroots level. And these people haven't gone away. They're still there. I mean, to John Boehner's point, I don't know where the Republican Party is. It's off somewhere out there sleeping. But those people still exist at a grassroots level. And it is unfathomable to me, even if they're not served by elected office holders, yeah. that those beliefs that they talked about over all those years that I've been involved in politics are not still there, whether for the small business person struggling to make it or whether for the family sitting around the kitchen counter trying to balance their budget. Well, I, I think one of the other problems is uh, voters don't care about the deficit enough. I think that's another thing people are finding out. Voters don't care if you spend other people's money. Uh, yeah, they, but, but, but uh, you know, uh, people right before they're diagnosed with cancer don't care that much about going to the, the, to the doctor either. But all right. of a sudden when they get the, the, the real word from the doctor right. that says, wait a minute, you may be feeling okay right now. But there is a profound problem within you that you got to deal with. I think that that's where, whether it's the president or other elected office yeah. holders in D.C., have totally done a disservice to the American public by not honestly right. diagnosing what's going on with our, within our nation's finances. Uh, Congressman Sanford, you now know long-term thinking is something that doesn't exist here in Washington, D.C. Thanks for coming on and sharing your views. Stay safe on the trail, sir. My pleasure. How, when, when are you going to yes, make sir. an announcement? When, when will you make an announcement? Well, no, no, I haven't made an announcement. I have not no, I decided to make an announcement. I said I'm going to give it a 30-day look in terms of deciding go versus no go. All right. Well, well, we'll touch base on Labor Day. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good to talk with you. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Meet the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.